Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is only your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we go to the week that was, we can see that all three major indices, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500, all rose for the week, basically about 2%. Nine out of the ten major sectors rose, led by tech and financials. And we can also see that crude oil gained 2.6%, while the dollar fell a little over 1%. There's that inverse relationship between the dollar and the stock market. As far as overseas news, we had the European leaders being focused on the, the bailout risk, the contagion risk of Greece, using something called the EFSF, European Financial Stability Facility. Uh, so I guess they're willing to adjust the numbers to, again, make sure that the Greek bailout doesn't spread out across Europe. As far as corporate news, we have Apple blowing out the earnings uh, on, after the bell on Tuesday. IBM topped expectations. What thing was interesting about this week was that Goldman Sachs, you know, didn't have great earnings, but it didn't affect the market. It's really probably the first time in a while where I didn't see anybody really caring about what Goldman Sachs. You know, again, I would say from 2006 to about 2010, you know, the financials were it. You know, if they were up, the market was up. If they were down, the market was down. But this year, uh, 2011 has really been tech-focused. Um, you know, the, the the techs are leading the market higher. You can see what Apple's earn, blowout earnings, uh, Amazon, um, and now we're having all these IPOs again, and it's almost like the dot-com boom of uh, uh, 99 where we had LinkedIn, and this week we had uh, Zippo, uh, Zip Realty, the Zippo cars. So, um, you know, it's just, you know, real interesting that Goldman Sachs doesn't, didn't have the effect that it used to have. And, of course, on the economic front, we're talking about the debt ceiling uh, raise limit, and uh, I'm recording this on Saturday, so... Uh, you know, we know that on Friday evening there was the two big press conferences. I'm not going to talk about this politically. Again, we're traders. We're focusing on what this means to the market, and certainly no raise of the uh, limit uh, probably will be bad for the market. Um, but we'll see what happens. Let's uh, go on to what could happen next week. You know, we can see as far as earnings. We can see we have Baidu, Amazon, Ford, Visa. Akame and Boeing. Really, I'm going to be watching, see what happens with Amazon, uh, Ford, and, and Visa. Uh, as far as economic events, we do have some things. We've got consumer confidence that can move the market. Friday, though, I mean, we, we, we're banging it out the box on Friday. E, e, uh, ECI, GDP, consumer sentiment, definitely some economic catalysts uh, coming into the market next week. Okay, so we are starting off with the S&P 500 on a daily chart. We'll zoom in a little bit <clears throat> just to give you a better view of what's going on here. You can see this was our previous downtrend line we are watching, which acted as support as we bounced off it this week and went higher. And now we're watching this new downtrend line off of this swing high, which is kind of where we're at right now, also at resistance of about 1346, 1350-ish. So we are at a resistance price level, and uh, but we also could come in and draw an uptrend line. So we are on line of Palooza here, a lot of lines. <laughs> so we got an uptrend here, we got a downtrend here. In other words, this is going to have to resolve itself. And overall, we've been in this channel now for a couple months. 
of our last swing high. We came in, put in a low at the uh, 200 moving average. And now as we move back up, it's going to be interesting to see how we resolve it. So we can see that our indicators are getting back to overbought price levels on the daily. As we zoom out and go to the weekly, we can see a little bit of the same thing. Here we came down. Here we are going up. Sort of a rising three pattern here, right? We move up consolidate breaking higher so that that definitely is bullish and this one too is uh the weekly is also heading towards overbought but the daily and the weekly are not overbought they're just heading towards it so um there may be a little more room to go to the upside um let's go out one more time to our monthly and with our line of palooza it might be a little bit harder to see all of this but we'll see Our monthly really shows more of our, our consolidation range over the past couple months here. Um, and a need to uh, really resolve itself one way or the other. Now, of course, the monthly is already pretty much overbought, getting ready to hook over. Stochastics already has. And the other thing that's interesting about the whole, all of this, as we go back to the daily, is, of course, what happened Friday afternoon and what's going on today, Saturday, you know, uh, noon, noonish time, 11 o'clock, I believe, is what's going on with the debt ceiling raise and the talks. And so if there's no news of progress over the weekend, then Fridays, there is no deal. Friday, uh, um, you know, we're, we're walking apart and we're not going to get into political affiliations or what you believe and what you don't believe. What, is, what we care as trader is, how does it affect my positions? How does it affect my mindset of, or particularly even a bias as we go forward? And you would have to say that that's going to be negative for the market. Okay, we are starting off as we look at our market leaders with Apple. And you know, the thing that's interesting about this is we were in this channel of about 320-ish, 325-ish up to about 365-ish all the way back to January, December, kind of where it started. And then uh, this week we popped out of this. Now we know that this week we had after the close on Tuesday, Apple's earnings. And you can see that basically... Uh, huge jump that we had um, after the market. Uh, so uh, Apple has broken out of th that channel. It's made a new high. A little bit sideways action here. Um, overall, you know, you have to say Apple is bullish. Um, and so we'll see what, the, let's go to some of the others and see what how we can count this out. Amazon. Amazon is consolidating, and it makes a little sense now. Why? Well, because we have earnings this week, and so uh, we'll certainly probably see some type of move one way or the other after the earnings report. So a Amazon right way uh, today we would say is sideways. Um, what about Google? Google had its uh, blowout earnings, um, and... It's uh, it's holding on to it. That's good. You can see that the uh, long term support resistance line all the way back to February is now holding up as support again, and we're getting ready to uh, test um, this high in here. So let's see what that price level is. So Google's earnings really has changed the sentiment of uh, what people think about it, and it's. All, you know, in literally five days, is taking out this six, seven month push down. It's almost coming out in seven days as we get close to retesting the swing high back from uh, the beginning of January. Amazing what earnings can do, huh? So uh, Google will say it's bullish. So Apple, Google, bullish, Amazon sideways. Goldman Sachs, as we said, Goldman Sachs has earnings this week. Do you see that big junk like Apple or, or uh, Google? No. Um, you can see here's your earnings. Uh, they did move up, but now we're back into this channel. That's, you know, from the last two or three months. So 
Um, a, we're at resistance of the 50 moving average. It's been a while since we've been in the 50 moving average. Uh, let's see, when's the last time? That would go all the way back to April. So uh, are we going to break? And even if we do break, um, we have some more resistance above that at 140. So I'm going to go with uh, uh, Goldman Sachs and Sideways, uh, Netflix. Netflix, our, our, our beast, is, is, you know, I'll be nice to say sideways, but obviously it's pulling back. But we can see the beauty of the 50 million average. If you're a long-term investor, you would have to say that each time we hit the 50 million average, you might have taken a little heat, but uh, it's been good. So there is a rationale to look at uh, uh, Netflix here as we get close to this uh, moving average, but um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, as the market. So Netflix will say sideways. So we got two bullish, two sideways uh, price line. Priceline also going to fall on this sideways, uh, possibly putting in a, uh, a a lower high here. So this is going to sideways. So we got three sideways, one uh, and two bullish. Still shows a sideways to up uh, mentality. I will show you. We were talking about these social media stocks, uh, like the dot com boom. Let me come down here to hours so you can see it. So here's Zelo. Um, Got all the way up to 60 and just kind of crushing right back down from, from there. As we go to some of our um, leading sentiment uh, features, we've got the dollar. And the thing that's interesting about this last week, we talked about this range that the dollar is in. And even though we briefly broke outside of that, um, you can see that we put an inside bar right there. So this could be that move higher which is going to bring the market lower you can see on the market profile we've got um, 74 being the point of control so it would be interesting if we can hold that that's where the most volume has been uh, recently and so that should be uh, volume support if we do break higher here off of this inside bar again that should bring the market down what about gold the flight to gold uh, this debt ceiling talk uh, we've got a new high on gold. We may see this take off uh, if we don't get anything, again, any resolution over the weekend here, any positive commentary. And you can see this past resistance uh, price point now is holding up as support. That's uh, Technical Analysis 101. And finally, we have crude oil. We set it's up for the week. And it's basically back in. Here is our channel for a month or so. And now we're back into that same channel point of control at almost $99. As we finish off with our education spotlight, uh, we've been talking about what separates winning traders and losing traders and how we can uh, put ourselves on the path to being a consistent profitable trader. And I would say the last thing that we're going to talk about in this series is the ability to distinguish between high and low risk trades. You know, our cartoon says we considered every potential risk except the risk of avoiding all risk. And that simply means is that, you know, when you're looking at your trading setups, you have to be able to distinguish whether or not this is high risk or low risk. This ties into what we talked about last time about leveling the playing field and understanding the playing field. And understanding that you, even though if your trading, trading setup uh, appears uh, and confers, you still have to know within the context of the game, of the market, whether or not it's a low risk or a high risk setup. And so you have to be able to distinguish and be able to tell yourself, yes, this is my trading setup, but it's at resistance, it's at support, it's at news, there's something going on that I need to pass. So being able to distinguish and more importantly, letting the market be in your favor, trading with the trend is one thing that separates winning and losing traders. You know you can find all our videos on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook called Are You Financially Literate? And we have a couple other resources for you. We have a great five free part video course. It's all about developing your own high probability trading setups. And we have our coaching sessions where we can work with you one-on-one, -on -one, help you develop a personalized trading plan, help you overcome all of these things that separate winning and losing traders and get you on the path to being a consistent and profitable trader. 
as far as our, uh, we have a great futures trading room. For the most part, it's averaging about $100,000 a, a week. And it's trade all of the major futures contract. A great futures broker. Interday margin as low as $300. Still haven't found anybody doing that. Found a couple of 400 but not $300. And then we have a charting package for you that works on both Macs and PCs so that you can scan and find all of your big moving stocks. But as we said, in the end, it does make a difference about your indicator and trading system if you're not able to pull the trigger in. And that's what our coaching and mentoring is all about. It's about working with you, helping you develop that trader's mindset so you can be effective, focused, disciplined, and a high probability trader. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.